Welcome to Tips from Trestle. This podcast is dedicated to discussing the senior living industry with a unique focus on food, hospitality, and leadership. I'm your host, Aaron Fish. As a 25-year veteran of the hospitality industry, I've focused my work on creating exceptional experiences for the customers we serve. My goal for this podcast? Educate, inform, and inspire leaders in senior living to bring food and hospitality to the front of mind in our industry. Let's bring the innovative and passionate spirit of hospitality to everything that we do. For the residents, families, guests, and employees we serve each and every day. So what are we waiting for? Let's get to it. Today on Tips from Trestle, I have Allison Bonner. Allison Bonner is the Director of Marketing and Engagement at Connected Living. Allison began her career in senior living in her hometown of Charleston, South Carolina, and has since developed her experience to include working with individual communities and large portfolio operators across the Southeast. With a background in hospitality, marketing, and communications, Allison brings a fresh perspective as a vendor to the senior living industry that puts an emphasis on giving seniors the care they deserve. Through her role with Connected Living, Allison works directly with her customer success team to support technology implementation at care communities. Allison, thanks for joining me today on Tips from Trestle. Thank you, Aaron, so much for having me. So one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you today uh, here on the on the podcast was I wanted to talk about technology in senior living and, and kind of how it we're bringing more hospitality oriented technology to senior living. You know, medical records is something that we've had electronically for a while, but I feel like technology uh, is creeping more and more into uh, the hospitality side of things and, and given how important hospitality is in senior living. I think it's important that we talk about it. So the, the first thing I wanted to kind of uh, talk to you a little bit about was the, this myth of residents using technology, right? I feel that senior living has been very hesitant to bring in resident facing technology because of that. And so with your experience Absolutely. at Connected Living, um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about what you're seeing um, with our, our residents these days. Yeah, I think that um, overall residents in senior living are using technology a lot more than our the care communities and and their families are giving them credit for. Right now, um, one every one out of every two seniors who moves into a community has a smart device and uses it around two to three times a day. Um, so it's a big it's a big turnaround from the myth that seniors are not using technology, and it's something that we. Um, it's still a challenge that we that we battle and overcome with all of our clients with with some hesitancy around technology, but it's definitely becoming more and more um, widespread usage across the across the industry. Do you find that the hesitancy is less with the residents and more with kind of the, the management and ownership of the communities when you start talking about technology around uh, hospitality and, and resident facing services? Um, I think that sometimes the the uh, the operators are a little hesitant to add in technology and to to disrupt the status quo um, of a care facility. But as communities start to implement this technology, it really is just such a big um, it's it's such a big benefit to the teams that are on site, the families that are that are coming to visit, the guests of your community. Having that technology in place makes everybody's lives a little bit easier. Yeah, I think about, you know, in my time in operations, especially as like an executive director, how we started hosting um, use how to use Facebook, how to use your iPad, Mm -hmm. like activities. And they honestly were more of the uh, well well attended activities that we did. I mean, bingo was always out there and happy hour was always popular. (laughs) (laughs) But I think these technology like trainings and, and interactions were, were really becoming more prevalent. And I, to your point, I think it was something that surprised me as an operator that yeah. residents just kind of bought in and we're doing it. Yeah. And we have, we have so much more to offer residents than just bingo. I know that that's the most popular thing in care communities, 
But, you know, after we've come out of this pandemic and in the face of COVID, we've we've seen our industry really show show their um, to show their reach with virtual programming, um, all sorts of things like that. There's there's so much more out there that we can utilize in senior living that doesn't always it's not always at the top of the minds. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, I, I kind of try and tell myself I'm a student of the hospitality industry as a whole, mm-hmm. right? So I always try to look at what are other hospitality organizations doing? Because for me, hospitality is one of the, I like to call them the three, the three-legged stool of senior living and hospitality is one of those legs. And so mm-hmm. I think we can take things from the, the industry. And so I know that, you know, hotels are, are really, uh, you know, personalizing the experience and they're doing a lot of it through technology. And so I know that that's something that Connected Living is doing with the services they're providing. So I, I really want to kind of talk about how hospitality technology is coming into senior living and how, how it looks the same, but how is it different as well? Yeah, so the hospitality industry has really kind of helped pave the way for a lot of the things I think are coming in senior living. You know, when you walk into your hotel room, instead of having to look for a piece of paper that has the the room service menu on it, it'll say turn to channel two, or we'll give you some prompts and things like that. And even hotels um, arming their their rooms with things like smart home devices, like smart light switches, Alexa echoes, things like that. Um, all that stuff is becoming pretty much the standard in the hospitality industry. And that's definitely the way that we, we would love to see the senior living industry follow suit because um, things like smart lights can help prevent somebody from having a fall in the middle of the night. Um, things like echo devices and, and things to get your programming prevent somebody from having to walk all the way out into the, the dining room to see what's on their menu. So there's lots of opportunity as um, as we kind of follow suit with the hospitality industry. Yeah, I really feel like, you know, it's a huge opportunity for communities to create more touch points for engagement for residents. Um, and so one of the things though, especially with my experience of those, those training cl- classes that I was telling you about is that mm-hmm. there's an engagement spectrum, right? So we know that one size does not fit all for, for the seniors that we have in our community. So um, based on your experience and what you've seen in, in helping other communities, how are, we, how are you addressing that? How can we make an impact um, for all of our seniors with those different touch points? Yeah, um, so as far as what, what individual seniors and their families, how they get their information um, can be done in so many different ways, depending on their comfortability with technology, um, their vision and hearing impairments. So maybe they can't see a smart, uh, um, a tablet screen. They might need to rely on voice technology and things like that. Um, but just like you said, our touch points with our residents, their families and their caregivers are so important to, to maintain that connection and to keep them engaged the whole time that they're in your care. So as, as we move forward and start trying to adapt to all those different needs, you know, you, as a community, you really, or as an operator, you'd really like to um, have a solution that can meet multiple different endpoints. So something that can be um, easily read on a mobile device on the go or a large screen on a tablet or in a visual display, like a digital sign. Yeah, there's so many different ways you can create those touch points. Do you, do you find that um, residents are, are more open to the technology with the, when, when they realize they have like one of those special needs? Um, and what that, when, I guess what I'm trying to, to say is residents, like I've said, t- tend to be more open about using technology. Um, and they're obviously in our communities because they realize there's a need that they need to support on those. Um, does that, from a from an operator standpoint, having all those various options, from a management standpoint, how does that look? Like, how do we how do we create the flexibility in the senior living communities for all of those various different touch points? Yeah, I think that we have to meet meet our residents, meet our communities where they are. Um, everybody receives information very differently. Uh, the way that I like to view my work 
calendar is through an app on my phone, whereas my mom, um, who's in her 60s, likes to write on her calendar on the fridge on the magnets. So um, depending on how people are getting their information, we kind of have to meet them where they are and give them a variety of different ways to, to receive that information. And with the help of things like voice technology, we can really get past just about any um, anything that would previously been considered like a disqualification for them to use technology. So one of the things that I always think about when, I, when you're looking at technology like this is scalability, right? Because as a standalone community, uh, you know, a rollout would, I would imagine, be pretty simple. But if I'm an operator that has 25, 35, 50, 80, 100 locations, how does that look? And then thinking about the, the broad spectrum of why well, I need to have the different, you know, the one size doesn't fit all mindset. Um, so what does that look like for communities? Do, do you find that there are, are struggles with scalability or uh, how, do you, how does Connected Living approach it? Let me ask that question. Yeah, um, so as far as, as when communities and operators are consider considering a technology vendor, um, to, to their care model, one thing that they should look for is somebody that has an end-to-end -end solution, so somebody that's got options. Um, our, our system in particular, our full suite of technology ecosystem, every piece of it is a la carte, um, so we can kind of add um, certain elements that fit your community better. Not every community has a big wall space for a, a mounted digital sign. Maybe they um, are in a independent community where there's no central lobby. We need to be able to send, send information out to multiple devices and things like that. So really the first step that I would suggest in with an operator or a community looking to expand their technology efforts is to first take a look and see how you're communicating with your, with your different audiences and what can be improved at your community. And then um, obviously once you have a great understanding of that, um, and, a, and a goal for how you'd like for your communica communication efforts to be, then when you sit down with a, with a partner like Connected Living or, or any other partner in senior living, um, it, it makes it a lot easier to find a solution that fits your mold. Yeah, well, I think about scalability and I, I'm always curious for operators who have multiple levels, right? Like I know in the past that what I needed for independent living might be different. I just think about it from a food perspective, right? So yeah. my independent living cafes, digital menuing and digital signage was very important. Whereas maybe in like an AL coffee bar, I don't necessarily need that tool, um, but I still need to offer those services or have some sort of communication about what the menu um, in the main dining room looks like. So thinking about that, um, do you have, the, does that scalability option become available for an operator who has multiple levels? How does that look? Yeah, so with communities, there's no two communities are the same. Even when they're owned by the same operator, there's usually some difference between them. Um, so it's hard to have a cookie cutter model that, that can fit everybody's needs. But what we do is we pretty much adapt to each individual community and, and their community groups. So if you've got a large CCRC community that has six different dining venues within one area, how else are you gonna get all the menus out to those different audiences without a platform like this? Um, and, and so we try and take what's existing at, at, at each community and try to find a way to make it digestible and accessible. One of the... So one of the things that I, I was curious about, and I think that started our conversation uh, about the podcast mm -hmm. was robots. Um, you know, I, I was recently at a senior living conference where we talked about technology. The question of robots came up um, and I've talked to different vendors about robots. And it seems like robots are a thing, but they're not necessarily something that everybody's comfortable with. Um, and when I think about resident engagement and, and food and service, like I would imagine that those robots and those systems need to be different. So uh, I'm curious to kind of get your take on robots and senior living and what, what that can look like, um, not just only from a use standpoint, but from an operator's expense standpoint. 
Yeah. And um, what's really interesting is the introduction of robotics into senior living um, was not as unsuccessful as a lot of people thought it would be. I think that it's it's widespread, a little bit more accepting. I think the, the cost of robots is a little more affordable than what people originally considered it to be. And we're really at a unique time where operators are searching for ways to be innovative in technology. And especially after the pandemic, you know, we had to find ways to um, to to organize telehealth visits for an entire community and and a lot of things around that that can be solved with robotics and with with a FaceTime on wheels, essentially. So are you finding, I would think that there's probably there needs to be some flexibility with whatever like hardware uh, you need to use because FaceTime for uh, telehealth is obviously a very different uh, process than a meal delivery for a yeah. resident. Um, and so I've seen many different models and makes and, and options out there. Um, but do you find that right now that is, is the hospitality and the engagement component more popular than maybe the food service component? Or do you see a mix of all of that? Um, I see a mix of all of that. I think that the hospitality um, side of robotics and senior living, being able to help um, carry out meals and, and distribute and bus tables and even just share menu information through an audio or visual announcement from the robot. I think, I think that is of the lesser of the two that's, that's but it's building traction. I think it's, it's going to be really exciting to see um, organizations like the Survey robot kind of kind of grow and, and excel in our industry. And then there are also robots that are more geared towards social engagement um, and kind of like in-room programming type things as well. And we actually work with a, um, a senior living social, social, sorry, a senior living social engagement robot called Temi. Um, okay. And Temi, Temi is um, made in Tel Aviv. It was, it was created by an engineer who was trying to get, get more involved and stay in touch with his aging father. And so we decided to bring Timmy on to our suite of technology kind of as an option and added bonus. Um, and sometimes it's, it's like our party trick at conferences, being able to see Timmy kind of float around and, um, and visit with groups. I had a Timmy um, at a conference I was at just yeah. uh, last week, kind of um, didn't follow me around, but it was following <laughs> the, uh, the the salesperson or the, the demo person mm -hmm. around um, and it caught my eye. And so I wound up having a conversation with them about that. But um, do you find that residents are willing to engage in this? Because I would think that the, the, the idea of this iPad on wheels, that, to oversimplify it, right. um, but... <laughs> To, to have that kind of running around the community, I would, I'm curious about that kind of technology, how the uh, ad adoption is for residents um, versus maybe just getting comfortable with FaceTime per se. I think the adoption and implementation of robotics and senior living um, is a huge part on, first of all, how, how and why they're using the robot. And then also um, the support and engagement of the community teams. Because if we plop a robot down in a community with, with no engagement plan, no support for their teams that are trying to find ways to utilize this robot. Um, last time I checked, CNAs, when they're in their certification classes, aren't, aren't considering how to, how to add robotics to mid passes and things like that. <laughs> But you know, the more the more involvement that a community's leadership has in um, in organizing events and helping to facilitate FaceTime calls and things like that, that's when we really see success with robotics. Um, at least in with our groups at Connected Living, is when um, the team takes the time to introduce the robot to the residents and it becomes a part of their community. Yeah, I could I would think that I mean, there's a lot of touch points that either are repetitive or that you might think about like a, a concierge type of role, right? Um, yeah. Instead of going to the front desk to ask for a question or picking up the phone and calling, you know, maybe there's an opportunity there for, for a, a robot that could, you could engage in that can get you all that information at, at a touch of the screen. And so um, I think it's gonna be interesting to see how this evolves 
um, not just from a food perspective, which, uh, you know, obviously I'm interested in, but I'm, I'm curious about the hospitality and the engagement overall, because I think there's going to be things that robots will take away that will allow us to focus more on those individualized touch points that maybe a robot couldn't do for a resident. Yeah. And I, I'm curious if you have any customers that are noticing that as they're using the robots that they're having, they're, they're, it's freeing them up for, for different things that maybe they didn't have time for as much. Absolutely. With um, face, facial recognition, we can do things as much as load somebody's load somebody's photo into the, the robotics platform so that they can greet a person, maybe a prospect coming in for a tour. Um, a lot of our communities are utilizing, um, utilize Temi a lot during COVID to screen guests um, and have a, have a system for, um, they, it was pretty much like their check-in point for entering the community. And then um, we also have some communities that are utilizing Temi for tours throughout their community. So when they come into the community, they get greeted by the robot and the robot says, what would you like to do today? And there will be buttons that say, I need to call the nurse or well, I'd like to do a video call or show, take me on a tour. And the robot can guide you throughout that community um, on a set preset path and give out information about the community throughout that journey. I didn't, I, that's one thing I guess I had never thought about was the, the robots giving tours. Um, I mean, I could definitely, you know, I thought of like, well, as a concierge or kind of that, um, that, you know, in, when I was in the hotel world, we kind of, we always had this, you don't point out directions to a guest, you take the guest to where they need to go. Mm -hmm. And obviously a robot can do that. But a, a tour is kind of, I guess, an extension of that, uh, almost like an in-person virtual tour, if you will. So it's an interesting, an interesting way to, to, to utilize a robot. I'm, and even for, you know, if a family member comes in from out of town that's never visited the community, um, Timmy could guide them to their residence room with the push of a button. And that would keep the, the person who was working the front desk able to be at the front desk to kind of help monitor the community as, as before, instead of having to take them physically throughout the building to, um, to guide them to that residence room. Yeah, no, I, that's a really cool feature that I hadn't initially thought of. So um, yeah. I, I'm curious, though, obviously, technology um, comes at a price, right? And so how, how do you address the budgetary constraints that a community or an operator might come across when they're looking at technology? Most times, um, a lot of what we can do for a community can go into existing structures like existing TVs. Um, it can, we can have an in-room TV channel added to your, to your existing cable lineup and things like that, that it's not, doesn't always have to be as much of a startup cost as kind of the sticker shock of adding hundreds of digital signs to your building. And so with a, with like a technology console with our team, we can kind of establish what you, what you have in place existing, what kind of equipment um, might need to be purchased or upgraded to be able to support um, like 24 seven digital signage and things like that. So we do have a couple opportunities where we can kind of scale based on what the, what the existing community has. And then we also have a couple um, smaller packages in a sense that can help people introduce their technology to their community, like in a phased rollout. So we can start with a digital sign in the mobile app. And then from there we can grow to include an in-room TV channel and um, some static screens in other areas of the community. So it doesn't have to be um, all technology all at once. We can build and as your teams grow accustomed to the system and, and are starting to see relief from a lot of their workplace efficiencies that they can gain using our content management system. From there, it's, it's just however, however um, big the impact you'd like to make with, with your technology. That's really great. You know, and I, I, I do think there's going to be, you know, there's always an ROI involved. Like, what does that look like? Um, and I, you know, my initial uh, experience with like robotics or, or those kinds of technologies was, you know, how do you measure the ROI or how do you get there? Um, and I think some of it isn't necessarily just dollars and cents. And maybe it's also a matter of 
well, how much time do I get back to, for my activity director? Or how much time do I save for a, a, a CNA or a caregiver to be able to be one-on-one -on -one with a resident as opposed to, well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones, I got to go over to Mr. Smith's room because he needs his meds now. Right. Um, and so I think there's a ton of opportunity with, uh, with technology and, and with how the, the hospitality aspect of what we do can really be enhanced by leaning on certain areas of that technology. So, um, yeah, we are kind of running right up on time here. So, um, is there any other like great wisdom nuggets of wisdom that you'd want to share <laughs> or anything that, uh, that we didn't cover the, about the, the technology and, and how it can impact hospitality and senior living that maybe you want to share? Yeah. Um, so the one thing that I really love about about what you do, do Aaron, is you really help communities prepare for um, their their end goals, prepare their their solutions in dining to really be successful and to serve their residents best. Um, and that's what we try and do with our with our communities and with our clients with technology is we want to give them the best chance for seamless communication. Um, and so I I really admire what what you do. Um, in the field and and relate very much to that because working in a I started working in a new build community that was very much like we didn't have um, we didn't have somebody with restaurant experience designing our kitchen and things like that and so and it's a very similar concept with technology we want to make sure that the infrastructure is in place so when whenever you do decide to add those different elements that gives your community the best chance for success so that's no, a, I think that's a big part in it. Yeah, no, looking at what you out you want the outcome to be is so important. And so, and I think you guys do a great job of that. So, um, Allison, thanks so yep. much. I, I think I lost my mic there for a second. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so um, I'm going to start over with what I was saying. Hopefully I can okay. edit that piece out. So, because um, okay. basically at this point, I'm just going to wrap up and mm -hmm. just let you tell people how to contact you. So, um, so here we go. So three, two, Allison, I think that's so great. Thanks so much for being here today. How can people, uh, contact you, follow you, uh, get to learn more about what you do and what connected living does. Absolutely. So, um, I would love for people to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's a great great place that I've come to realize that our industry really gets together and supports um, leaders in senior living. And then we also have um, the Connected Living website is connectedliving.com. And you can also follow us on LinkedIn there as well to see some um, practical use cases of our technology and, and how communities are implementing it. Awesome. Well, Allison, this has been so great to kind of talk technology and hospitality, and I appreciate all your time today. Uh, and thanks so much for being on Tips from Trestle. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. Another one in the books. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. You can follow or direct message me on LinkedIn, where I'm always commenting and posting about food, hospitality, and leadership for the senior living industry. Or give me a follow on Twitter at AHFish or Instagram at Aaron H. Fish. And check out my company, Trestle Hospitality Concepts, at www.trestlehospitalityconcepts.com. I'm your host, Aaron Fish, and this has been another episode of Tips from Trestle.